Along with Elon Musk, he co-founded PayPal. Peter Thiel is also the managing director of Founders Fund, a venture capital firm specializing in technology and innovation. Among his well-known investments are Airbnb and Affirm, both of which went public last year. He also co-founded Palantir, a CIA-backed big data company that went public via a direct offering in 2020. Thiel, Facebook's first major investor, has sold the majority of his stock but continues to serve on the company's board of directors. His Teal Foundation also provides a small number of young entrepreneurs with $100,000 over two years to skip college and pursue their business dreams. Here, Peter Teal's top 10 rules for success. 1. You are the entrepreneur of your life. You are the entrepreneur of your life. And you can, you can, you can decide, you know, what you're going to do, what you're going to prioritize. Um, and uh, you should never forget that you have a tremendous amount of freedom as it is to make these very basic decisions on uh, what you're going to do with your life and um, you can start you can start anytime you want Two, do one thing uniquely well the most critical thing for every startup is to be uh, doing one thing uniquely well better than anybody else in the world technology is a fundamentally uh, global business um, and uh, the really great technology companies um, are doing something significantly better than anybody else in the world. Um, and you, you want to be in that sort of a position. I think if you're just starting a business, uh, one of the questions that's always valuable to answer is what do you know that's true that nobody um, else understands? Or, um, or more prosaically, uh, what, uh, what great business exists that nobody is building? Three, make sure people align properly. One part that I'm always um, very focused on is sort of the structure of these companies and how, how well are people aligned. And so you can, um, and uh, making sure that people are you know, aligned properly, not just that they say they are. I think this is sort of a very, a very legal kind of a framework to think about what are people's incentives, you know, are they going to be aligned or not. And, and I think you want to both have formal alignment where you set the structure right and you want to have um, informal alignment where the people would naturally try to work together well in one, one way or another. Um, and I, th I think that somehow tends to get obscured in all these other ways. Um, you know, there's always a, there's always a, uh, there's always a prehistory question I like to ask founders of, of companies, which is um, how did you, uh, how did you um, meet, what's the prehistory of the company before you got started? Um, and I find that to be a really instructive uh, set of questions to ask. A bad answer is something like, you know, we met a week ago at a social networking function, at a business networking function. We decided to start a company because we both wanted to be entrepreneurs. Um, you know, that's like saying, I, I married the first person I met at the slot machines in Las Vegas. <laughs> and you might hit the jackpot, but it's probably a really bad idea. Um, and a much better answer is, you know, we've been talking about this for a long time, you know, maybe one of us is more on the tech side, the other one's more on the business side. We have these sort of complementary skills. And, uh, and so I think this question of um, alignment and structure is, um, is incredibly important. Four, aim for monopoly. I think that um, all, if you're a founder or entrepreneur, what you want to aim for is monopoly. You want to aim to build a company that is one of a kind uh, and that it's so far um, differentiated from the competition that it's not even competing. Um, and, um, and I think this is the conventional wisdom is always that capitalism and competition are somehow synonyms. I believe they're antonyms. A capitalist is someone who's in the business of accumulating capital. A world of perfect competition is a world where all the profits are competed away. If you want to compete like crazy, um, then you should just open a restaurant in Chicago. Um, and, um, and, uh, and I think the, uh, the great companies like uh, Google, sort of the paradigm example I use, has had no serious competition in search since 2002 when it definitively distanced itself from Yahoo and Microsoft. And as a result, it's been generating enormous cash flows for the last 12 years. Five, don't be a fake entrepreneur. But yeah, there probably are a lot of people who, um, who end up trying to be sort of somewhat fake entrepreneurs, where uh, the goal is to be an entrepreneur. Um, if you ask people, what do you want to do with your life? 
what do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be an entrepreneur, which I, I always think is a somewhat too common, some, disturbingly somewhat too common. Um, and I think, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, um, and, you know it's, it's saying that you want to be an entrepreneur is sort of like saying I want to be rich or I want to be famous. You know, you know, nobody in their right mind starts a company for the sake of starting a company. You start a company because there's a very important problem to solve that's not getting solved in large, you know, governmental or nonprofit or for-profit institutions. And that's why you actually need to start a new company. Just starting a company for the sake of doing so is a, um, is a really odd thing to do. 6. Value substance over status. On an individual level, I think it is always, uh, it's always really good if, if there's something that you're incredibly passionate about and, um, and just sort of are fine to be intrinsically interesting and, uh, and that, that people pursue that. Um, and so the, you know, one of, the, one of the, the, the resolutions I came up with um, a number of years ago was to always uh, um, value substance over status, substance over prestige. Um, and uh, you know, if, if I sort of was giving my younger self advice on what to what to do or how to how to think about um, your one's one's life, I you know I probably I, I think I you know um, I, I probably would still go to Stanford, um, you know I, I might still go to law school, um, but I, I'd ask I'd ask sort of I'd ask a lot more questions why why I was doing these things, and I think uh, I think if I was honest about it, too much of it was driven by um, by prestige and status, and not quite enough about um, really the substance of uh, of trying to learn things. And you know, the, I had sort of this. I sort of think of it as this sort of crazy rolling quarter life crisis, and sort of culminated in this uh, in this you know big New York law firm where you know from the outside everybody wanted to get in, from the inside everybody wanted to get out. Um, you know, um, after I, I lasted seven months and three days, and after. Uh, um, and uh, when I when I when I left, one of the people down the hall said, "You know, it's so reassuring to see you leave, Peter. I had no idea it was possible to escape from Alcatraz," <laughs> which which again, uh, and you know, and again, I and all you had to do was go through the front door. But our identity, um, people's identities, get so wrapped up in um, the things they compete for that it was inconceivable for people to actually do that. And and then the question was, you know, well, how had I ended up there? Why why had I not thought about that more? And, uh, and I think it was um, that I had taken too many of these shortcuts of valuing sort of what was prestigious, what was conventional over what I, uh, what I really wanted to do. So I think, I think always substance over status. Seven, don't lose sight of what's valuable. And this is why I think competition is always this very two-edged thing. Uh, when you compete ferociously, you will get better at that which you're competing on, but you will always narrow your focus to beating the people around you, and, uh, and it often comes at this very high price of uh, losing sight of what is uh, more important or perhaps more valuable. 8. Trends are overrated. The general theme I would suggest is that all trends um, are overrated. And so uh, if you think about current uh, trends in technology, uh, you know, uh, uh, healthcare IT software, education software, overrated. SaaS enterprise software, really overrated. Um, big data, cloud computing, if you hear those words, you need to think fraud, you need to run away as fast as you possibly can. Um, and, um, and the reason these buzzwords, um, tell you that something um, is, that there's, that these buzzwords are sort of like a tell in poker that people are bluffing and that there's nothing, that there's, uh, that the business is not undifferentiated because the buzzwords tell you that it is one company of a category that's undifferentiated from the others in that category and therefore uh, are symptomatic somehow of, of um, a lot of competition and a bad, uh, a bad business idea. And so, you know, you don't want to be the fourth online pet food company. You don't want to be the 10th thin film solar panel company. You don't want to be the 1,000th restaurant in San Francisco. And so there is something about if you can describe um, what a company is doing um, very straightforwardly by uh, referencing um, uh, these, these buzzwords, these categories that already exist, um, that's actually a sign that it's a, pretty bad, uh, that, it's, uh, that it's a pretty bad idea. Nine, don't dwell on the past. I think there's a problem in, in Western Europe where, um, where failure is, uh, 
it's uh, it's too impossible to fail. Once you fail, you can never you can never start over. I think there's a there's an opposite version of this in California where I think sometimes people are a little bit too facile about failure because I, I think it actually is always incredibly damaging to people. Um, and if you work really hard at something and it doesn't work, um, uh, uh, that's, you know, that's, that's going to be psychologically damaging. You know, people have less confidence in you. There are all sorts of reasons why, why that, tends to be, uh, that tends to be quite bad. I, I think that um, I think when people, I, I don't think there's that much you learn from failure, by the way, because um, it's, it's typically overdetermined. It's like, why is technology slowing down? Why did you fail? It's typically five separate reasons. You worked with the wrong people. The idea was bad. The timing was wrong. It wasn't a monopoly. The product didn't work. Uh, and OK, next time I'm working with different people. You figure out one out of the five things, you're likely to fail, fail again. Uh, so I think, I think uh, failure is not something one can learn very much from. So I think that's sort of a myth that I, I, I would challenge. Um, but what I think uh, what I think you should do when you when when something goes badly wrong is um, you just keep going uh, you, you, do, you do something else uh, and you don't dwell on the past. Ten. Find the secret path. Already in the time of Shakespeare, the word ape meant both primate and to imitate. And there is something very deep in human nature that is imitative. It's how it's, it has a lot of good things. It's how language gets learned by kids. It's how culture gets transmitted in our society. Uh, but it also can lead to sort of a lot of insane behavior. It can lead to the madness of crowds, to bubbles, to, to sort of mass delusions of one sort or another. And, um, and I think it can... Um, uh, and I think it's, you know, advertising, we always think of, we always tell ourselves that we're not that uh, prone to this, and I think that's something I'd encourage all of us to rethink. You know, we always think of advertising as something that just afflicts other people, that never afflicts ourselves. Um, I think this is very far from the case. And so, uh, and so the monopoly competition is not just this intellectual failure, it's also this thing where um, you have a tiny door where everyone's trying to rush through, uh, and there may be around the corner a vast, and a secret gate that no one's taking, and you should always find the secret path and, and, and go ahead and take that. With this hopefully, investors able to take in this valuable advice to implement into their lives. Thank you for watching.